it's earth but not as we know it this is 70 million years ago there are no oceans it's much smaller and then this begins to happen it starts to swell like fruit ripening in the summer and as it does so the surface two billion years old splits and it splits into continents and those continents move further and further apart as it grows and grows we're now 30 million years ago and it's still growing even as the Pacific opens up already it's only now that South America is pulling away from Africa and it swells up to the size that is so familiar to us today but what you're watching is impossible science says the earth's always been this size where could the matter have come from well they only recently found dark energy and dark matter they didn't know existed but they know your eyes are lying when you see this so let's just run back in time 10 20 30 million years as you see it Africa and South America closing up 40 million years, 50 million years. The Pacific is still quite vast, as you see, 60 million years, seven. And now you see Australia starting to be pushed up by Antarctica as the entire Pacific closes up. And Australia now is going to nestle up against North America and up against the Far East as we go back to the time of the dinosaurs. Once your lying eyes have seen this, it's no longer a theory. It's like watching somebody solve a Rubik's Cube. It's a visible three-dimensional fact. So let your lying eyes dwell on another of these graphics by Neil Adams, all copyright Neil Adams. Terrific stuff as we go back in time, 10 million years, 20 million years. Watch as South America gets twisted by this globe and then fits nicely in underneath Africa. And then on the far side, as we come back in time now, watch on the right as the Pacific surges in a vast growth which outpaces that of the Atlantic and gives the vast size of the Pacific, which we still see to this day. This is the Rubik Cube solved fact before your eyes. Just remember that the dry land on which we stand is as ancient as your great-great-grandfather's bones. The upper continental plates that, that are dry land of Earth are 2,000 million years old. These oceans that have come only since the fall of the dinosaurs, they're only 60 million, 70 million years at most. 2,000 million years we've had dry land. But is this swelling happening just on Earth? Of course not. It's happening throughout the solar system. Here's the surface of Mars, and you can see this giant tear in the surface, which again is only explained by expansion. Look at that. That's all expansion. And this area here, you can see the directions. As we now reverse and shrink Mars, watch the expansion just s disappear. Everything is growing in the solar system. But these are more than just the talented Neil Adams and his illustrations. This is a professional geologist, Professor S.W. Carey, explaining the expanding Earth proof back in the 70s and he's world leading. Likewise, Australia was right up against Antarctica and the ocean between has, has opened by 3,000 kilometers. Now when you add them all up right around the Pacific you'll find that the rim of the Pacific has greatly increased in length. The Pacific uh, should have greatly decreased. This is absurd. Carey had helped drag the rest of his uh, profession into understanding that tectonics was real and that continents could move apart. He just knew it wasn't the full answer. Here he explains that others were onto this before him. No, only during the last quarter of a century. During the 30s and 40s and 50s, I taught what you now call plate tectonics. 
I took for granted that the Earth's uh, diameter was constant. It hadn't occurred to me anything else. But if I'd only known it, in Germany, uh, Lindemann had published his book on expanding Earth in 1928, and uh, uh, Hilgenberg in 1932, and uh, Kindle in 1940. But these weren't translated into English. They weren't translated until I translated them uh, 20 years ago. And in fact, here is a leading German geologist, Professor Heinz Harber, on German television, trying using uh, gas in a balloon to explain what we just saw in computer graphics. Back to Neil Adams graphics. Recognize this place? While you're thinking about that, if you like the content, this is The Beautiful Truth with Fenton Dunn reporting, and it's heavily censored here on YouTube, so do like and subscribe to help offset that. But back to Neil Adams, as he shows us somewhere that's going to become familiar very quickly. It's the Mediterranean, and there you see it opening, and the characteristic pattern of spreading, which is straight across, and then laterally to the left and to the right, taking place in the Mediterranean, taking place all over the same spreading pattern. This is how the Earth grows. And here we see the Indian Ocean undergoing the same process, opening up as Australia on the right there is pulled away from Asia and it spreads out and opens. Meanwhile, in the skies up above, the moon is doing exactly the same thing as this illustration shows. The distinctive features of the moon today only appearing as it too swells in size. like fruit on a tree. And not just our moon, every moon, like this moon, which is Ganymede, a moon of Jupiter. Exactly the same. All of which means that the dinosaurs were, regardless of cause of extinction, fundamentally screwed because the gravity was around about half the size that it is today, which made being a huge dinosaur like this absolutely feasible. But when gravity increases, this kind of size ain't feasible anymore. And you can't have a neck that long, <laughs> sticking out that much. Uh, it just weighs too much. And it's not just the dinosaurs either. I mean, it's the pterosaurs actual size there with people in the background. Uh, I mean, these things were absolutely huge. There's a pterodactyl uh, compared to a human being. Uh, they were 20 some 30 feet wide, <laughs> 20 something foot wide. Uh, and all of this is only feasible. You hear insects again, Meganeuropsis in flight. All of this huge creatures, huge trees, huge vegetation, all of that because of the fact that it's on a planet with half the gravity. The actual evidence from history supports this, verifies this, and makes this the most plausible explanation for the facts we have in front of us. I think what made these ideas uh, truly dangerous was that they implied that it wasn't a question of the universe being a done deal, like it's all over. If you weren't around 11 billion years ago, wow, you missed it, it was great, Whew, big bang. Like a firework show that you didn't show up for. Uh, whereas this implies that the universe is a little bit more like a work in progress. And this is the nature of the progress. I mean, what else is there that we currently believe, that we currently take for granted? that isn't and shouldn't be taken for granted? That's a good question. And those are the kinds of questions that I'll be going into in these heretical <laughs> audios and videos uh, that I'm putting out. Because uh, it's time to question everything. That's what science is. Question everything with a scientific method. 
and using that and using your lion eyes. I hope we've gotten a little closer to solving that tonight. Back with more soon, but in the meantime, for BreakForNews.com, this has been Finton Don reporting. See you soon. Thanks for joining me, by the way.